Dear students, in the previous session of this chapter, we learned how to produce electromagnets, how electromagnets are used to get mechanical energy in motors, and how electricity can be generated using changing magnetic field. Let's first visit a real generator from hydroelectric power station to get a glimpse of its working. This is a generator which used to produce electricity for the first time in India. This generator was direct current generator. It was manufactured at General Electricals which was founded by Thomas Edison. This was brought to India in 1902 to start first hydroelectric power station. Water from the falls created by the river Kaveri was fed into the pipes. The kinetic energy of the water turned the turbine inside, in turn rotating coils near a magnetic field. In the last session, we have seen how the mechanical energy gets converted into electrical energy. The current that we use in our houses is AC. We rarely use DC. There is an interesting history behind this. Two greatest minds, Thomas Alva Edison and Nikola Tesla had intellectual war known as war of currents. When generators were invented, they were only DC generators. But later, alternating dynamos came into existence. Thomas Alva Edison company was producing DC and supplying it to many houses charging money. Tesla, who once worked in Edison's company, found the advantages of AC over DC and started to promoting it. The main advantage he found was it can be transmitted longer distance with minimum loss of current. But having invested so much of money, Edison attempted to prove that AC is dangerous than DC. To prove, it is said that he even electrocuted an elephant by supplying AC. But over a time period, the series of experiments proved that AC is more advantageous. Both AC and DC are dangerous equally if proper care is not taken. In this chapter, we are going to learn about how to take care of the electricity which comes to our houses. The generator that we just visited was used in the hydroelectric power stations. The technology used here is very much similar to the generation of electric current in thermal power stations and windmills. Electricity from all these power stations is collected in grades and distributed to our houses through transformers. In this session, we are going to learn about the designing of the wiring inside our houses and the ways in which we have to take care when electricity enters our houses. We have electric poles near our houses. Electric pole usually have many wires. Out of those wires, two wires come into our houses. One wire is live wire and the other one is neutral wire. The wires from the electric poles either may come to the roof or may go to the ground which we call it as underground cabling. Nowadays we use lot of this underground cabling in order to avoid the wire density over the roofs. When that when those two wires come inside they enter the meter Electric meter measures the amount of electricity consumed by all the appliances in our houses. This will be the beginning of the circuit in our houses. The two wires which are red and black in color enter the meter from the electric poles. 
after entering the meter they leave on the other side of the electric meter a live wire and a neutral wire enter our houses from the colors by the colors we may not recognize the wires outside but once they enter the meter they can be recognized by their colors the live wire will be of potential 220 volts and the neutral wire will be of 0 volt so the potential difference between live wire and neutral wire will be 220 volts after the meter the live wire comes in contact with the fuse fuse is an important part in safeguarding the electrical appliances in our houses the current from the live wire here is 5 ampere but due to unexpected reasons like lightning the incoming current may exceed which results in damaging the electrical appliances inside the house so we should control the current entering into the house which is done by the device called fuse you might have heard about fuse fuse is a safety device it is connected to the live wire always let us see how the fuse works we have a bulb which is glowing here this bulb is connected to electrical circuit through live and neutral wire this live wire and neutral wire are in turn connected to a fuse so let us connect live, live and neutral wire keep observing the fuse don't try this at home if we connect live and neutral wire the fuse burns and the bulb is not glowing now indicating that when live wire and neutral wire come in contact we call this as short circuit which abruptly increases the current flowing in the circuit by inserting a fuse we may avoid the damage done by the flow of more current in the circuit the fuse here breaks the circuit and helps us by avoiding such damages we are looking at an electric circuit here here we have 9 volts and we can see the current also which is connected to a bulb of 10 ohm resistance this is in series connected with the fuse the rating of the fuse is 4 ampere that is if the current flows more than 4 ampere it's going to safeguard the fuse safeguard the bulb by burning itself let us go on increasing the voltage and keep looking at the current here the current can be seen in the ammeter let us going to increase the volt when the voltage is increased keep looking at the current in the ammeter let us increase the voltage the current increases to 1.65 to 2.10 the voltage is 21 22 23 the current increases to 3 4 remember the ampere rating in the fuse is 4 ampere so until the current reaches 4 ampere the fuse works the bulb glows now the current is 3.99 ampere the fuse is working fine everything is fine once the current reaches 4 ampere the fuse burns itself and stops the flow of electric current into the bulb why have we used the fuse here because we have to we had to safeguard the bulb so the bulb is safe now the fuse has saved the bulb let us check whether the bulb is safe or not let us remove the fuse see the bulb is working fine the fuse has burnt itself and saved the bulb this is only a representation the bulb need not have 4 ampere fuse but any sensitive appliance may require proper current if the current exceeds the limit the appliance may get damaged so this is only an example how fuse can save or safeguard an electrical appliance we know that heating devices like geyser draw more current 
If you use the same fuse for geyser as well, it may get burnt. So, to connect the heating devices, we use thicker wire, like thicker neutral wire, thicker live wire and fuse of higher ratings. Usually, it will be of the rating 15 ampere. After the fuse, we connect the electrical appliances parallelly. That is, if one wire of the electrical appliance goes to the live wire, the other wire goes to the neutral wire. The neutral wire and the live wire will be then connected to the electrical appliances. Electrical appliances are connected in parallel. That is, one wire from live wire and one from neutral wire will be connected to any appliance. Here we are looking at a bulb which is connected to live wire and a neutral wire. The bulb is in between connected to a switch. Switch breaks or makes the circuit. Now we have not symbolized the switch here but we have seen how the switch works in our houses. For every appliance, there will be a switch separately. We use electrical appliances in our houses which work with the same potential difference. That is, almost all of our appliances work with 220 volts. Of course, there are some devices like mobile phones which requires less potential difference which can be obtained by using a charger. A charger reduces the incoming voltage. Let us see how parallel connection of the electrical appliances is useful. We have taken an electric circuit which is connected to two bulbs. The battery is connected to two bulbs here and those two bulbs are connected in parallel. That is one of the wires coming out of the bulb is connected to live wire and the other one goes to the neutral wire with the help of a switch. So when the switch is open, no current flows through the circuit. When we close the switch, let us see, we close this switch now. When we close the switch, the current flows through the first appliance only. The second appliance is not working because the switch is open. This is the advantage of parallel connection. If we switch on the second switch, then the second appliance will also start working. So each appliance will have a separate switch in parallel connection. And when the switch is on or off, then only the circuit opens or closes making the electrical appliance work depending on the switch. The current continuously flows through the circuit which is closed and does not flow through the circuit which is not closed or which is open. This type of electrical appliance will see that the same potential difference this type of circuit will see that the same potential is supplied to all the electrical appliances. So this is one more advantage of having a parallel connection. In our houses, we all use the same type of connection. That is the devices are connected in parallel. You can try this by switching on or off one electrical appliance. How many electrical appliances can be connected to a pair of live and neutral wire? If we keep on connecting more and more devices to the same pair of live and neutral wire, instruments draw more and more current. This will heat up the wire and may damage the circuit. This is called as overloading. Let's see how fuse protects the appliance from getting damaged in case of overloading. We have four switches and the sockets here. These four sockets are connected to the same wire, same pair of wires. Let us assume that we have connected four different appliances to the same 
pair of wires through these sockets. When all of them are on, this draws more current and damaging the electrical appliances. This can be avoided by inserting a fuse. Let us see how. We have an electrical appliance which draws more current than 3 amperes. When current increases than 3 ampere, this fuse which is inserted in between gets itself damaged by protecting and protects the electrical appliance by cutting the current. We can understand this through an animation. We have an electrical circuit here. To the circuit we have connected two bulbs and the current which is flowing through these two bulbs is 3.19 ampere 3.19 ampere and we have a fuse connected to it when the current is increased when we connect one more electrical appliance the current here may get increased if suppose we have one electrical appliance which is sensitive if it gets more than 4 ampere current gets damaged so we have connected a fuse of 4 ampere here whenever a current of more than 4 ampere flows through the circuit the fuse gets damaged cuts the circuit by protecting the electrical appliance which is sensitive let us see it how now we are going to connect a third appliance here by switching it on when we switch on keep observing the fuse here and also the current let us switch it on you saw that the fuse gets burnt cutting the electrical circuit the current stops flowing the all the appliances are not working now let us check whether the appliances get got damaged or not by replacing this fuse the damaged fuse with a new fuse in order to do so we have to minimize the current so we have opened this third appliance we have not connected the third appliance we are connected only we have connected only two appliances here the current is less than 4 amperes the voltage is fine the current is fine the electrical appliances are safe now this is how a fuse protects the circuit by damaging itself when the more current flows through the circuit many of our electrical appliances like computers have metallic surfaces even in the case of iron box metallic surface if it comes in contact with the live wire whoever touches it will get electric shock but there is a method where this electric shock can be avoided let's see how these electric shocks can be avoided every socket in our houses has few holes Usually, it will be a live wire, red in color, a black wire and another wire which is green in color which is called as earthing wire or grounding wire. Earthing wire usually takes the leakage current from the metallic part of any appliance into the earth. It acts as safety device. Metallic appliance when comes in contact with the live wire may give a shock to the person who touches the metallic part. So this leakage current will be then taken into an aluminium or iron rod. This aluminium or iron rod is usually buried by digging a hole in the earth. So by doing so we can avoid the leakage current. We can take this leakage current into the ground or earth thus the person who may touch the electrical appliance metallic part of the electrical appliance gets no shock if our appliance draws more current than usual for example 
an iron box or a geyser, we see that there will be three pins in the socket. Those three pins, out of those three pins, two will be connected to live wire and neutral wire. Those two wire go to the appliance and make the appliance work. Usually in between we will have switch for those two live wire and neutral wire which makes our brakes circuit. Why this these appliances which draw more current may contain metallic surfaces. When these metallic surfaces by chance may come in contact with the live wire. When metallic appliance come in contact with the live wire, a person who touches the metallic appliance, say if you are pressing your clothes, by chance if you touch the metallic part and that metallic part had come in contact with the live wire, you may get shock. Few of you may have experienced this. In order to avoid this, we use a third wire called as earth wire. Earth wire will be green in color. The earth wire then is connected to the metallic rod which is buried deep underground. Remember this wire will not go to the electrical pole. It will be buried underground near our houses, nearby our houses. So, this is also a safety method where we can avoid electrical shocks but this will avoid small shocks only. The fuse avoids much of the damage caused to the electrical appliance. Dear students, after learning so many things, let us go to some questions and find whether we have learned it correct or not. A fuse should always be placed in the option A, live wire of the main circuit, option B, neutral wire of the main circuit, option C, earth wire of the main circuit, option D, both live and neutral wire of the main circuit. Answer for this question is live wire of the main circuit. What happens to the current in short circuit? The options are A reduces substantially, B does not change, C increases heavily, D vary continuously. Answer for this question is increases heavily. The next question is, the insulation cover of earth wire is, option A, blue, option B, red, option C, green, the option D, white. Answer for this question is, option C, green. In India, the potential difference between live wire and neutral wire is the options are option A 240 volt, option B 250 volt, option C 280 volt, option D 220 volts. Answer for this question is 
ऑप्शन डी टू ट्वेंटी ओल्ड्स द मेन एडवांटेज ऑफ एसी पावर ट्रांसमिशन ओवर डीसी पावर ट्रांसमिशन ओवर लॉन्ग डिस्टेंस इज ऑप्शन ए एसी ट्रांसमिट विदाउट मच लॉस ऑफ एनर्जी ऑप्शन बी लेस इंसुलेशन प्रॉब्लम ऑप्शन सी लेस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ इंस्टेबिलिटी ऑप्शन डी इजी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन ए ए सी ट्रांसमिट विदाउट मच लॉस ऑफ एनर्जी Which among of these are the main characteristics of fuse element? The options are high conductivity, option B low melting point, option C do not burn due to oxidation, option D all of the above. answer for this question is option d all of the above here are some homework questions write them down write the answers for those questions later discuss these answers with your teacher have a good day dash is the commercial unit of electrical energy the touching of live wire and neutral wire directly known as in our houses we receive ac electric power of dash volts which among of these are the main characteristic what may be the possible reasons for overloading dear students In the last 5 sessions of this chapter magnetic effect of electric current we studied the ways in which we can produce a stronger powerful artificial magnets from which we found the techniques of getting mechanical energy from electrical energy and electrical energy from mechanical energy which are called as motors or generators we saw how these motors and generators can be used in our daily lives and we also learned how the electric current which is entering into the houses has to be connected in a manner to get maximum use of electric current electric current is a boon to the human kind but it is not 100% safe or 100% eco friendly as of now in your higher classes you will still learn in your higher classes you are going to learn more things about this electricity electricity like any other forms of energy has to be conserved don't waste electric current thank you